Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. I'm gonna try and keep this one unedited and cut to the chase. You may be wondering what this video is. Uh, let me take you back to 2020. My YouTube channel had been a little bit dormant uh, for a few years. You know, I've been uploading and so had some of my friends, but it had definitely been a slowdown while I was living in China. In 2020, when we were in lockdown, I reinvigorated this YouTube channel. Like I pretty much relaunched it, uh, rebranded it from the SS Motion to the domain. One of the first things that I did when I relaunched that channel was make this Oni Bridge Diorama. It was a really exciting project and just seeing how much the community actually got on board with it really was the driving force, like the driving force for me to then go back to Hong Kong and do part-time Hong Kong teaching, part-time YouTube, then eventually do six months in America full-time on YouTube. Now I'm back in England, and let me tell you, the last month has been one of the craziest in my life. I haven't had a single day to sit down or edit or really do anything. It's just been non-stop, ready for my brother's wedding in a couple of days' time. Uh, but th there's always been a pressure at the back of my mind that I really wanted to make a new diorama video. So I spent a few hours last night and this morning redoing the entire Oni Bridge diorama. I'm really proud of it, and there's gonna be a full showcase of that coming out on Monday. And then after that video, I'm going to floodify it and do a flood firefight diorama. I just wanted to give you a heads up on what today's video is. It's a trilogy. The first three videos of the Oni Bridge diorama filmed in 2020, re-edited. The amount I could edit it is a little bit limited because I couldn't change the music. It was fixed to the clips, so I had to just do pans. But I've still put it into a better format. I did some color correction, that kind of stuff. And I'm really proud of it. Like, I really love the Oni Bridge Diorama to begin with. I know it's one of the first videos that a lot of my fans followed on this channel. So I thought I'd bring it back, do a trilogy, like an extended all three episodes together with some better editing. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the Oni Bridge Diorama trilogy. Here it is. Hurry up. But you wanna do this? Be my guest. But this ain't a job you wanna rush. Does that do it? Signal good! Arm the other detonators and pull back to me! Oh, yeah! Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome to another video with the SS Motion, or the Domain, as we're changing the name right now. And today we're having a look at my custom Oni Alpha Halo 3 ODST Watchtower. Let's take a look. So Halo 3 ODST has always been my favorite Halo game, and I created this bad boy a few years ago, but today I'm making some modifications, and I'm also adding all of my new police troopers. If you saw my latest haul, I got a lot of them from a random storage bin in Burnley. There's no way, there is no way someone has this many police officers in a storage bin in Greater Manchester. There's no way. There's so many police. Shame they won't exist a few hours after Halo 2. So I'm gonna add them all and we're gonna have a good time. I tried to have a very symmetrical design to it. Everything sort of runs and mirrors down the middle. Then we've got one of these blockades at the back, two shotgun and assault rifle racks. Tool storage here. I love this thing so much. I spent a long time on it, made sure that every detail is absolutely identical on all four sides. Even the detail like these movable searchlights and we've got the ODST drone uh, just doing some reconnaissance on the top of there. One of the modifications we're gonna do today is build uh, some handrails here. It's one of the only things I never actually had the materials to build at the time, but I did some routing and I found some. We're going to add today two little computer units so they can activate and detonate the bridge. I'm gonna break a little bit of the symmetry and add some grates here. Like there's some sewage work underneath. Perfect. To make these handlebars, um, the actual piece I wanted is really difficult to find, but I found that some of the old um, armory bays came with these pieces here, which are kind of similar. So what I've done is I've got four of these, eight of these little pieces here, then we just attach them on like so. We can just pop them on like this. I have dreamed about making this. <laughs> As I was saying, bingo bango, I have really dreamed about finishing that uh, 
handrail for a long time, actually. Coils around. We're also going to repair a few of these. I found some more in the attic. We just need to add that stud on there. I also have a hand on the battlefield. It was one that just was spare and I thought someone lost their hand during the battle, I don't know. Traffic cones, I'm gonna set them out. Sort of symmetrical. I have a little stairwell running up there for maintenance. A health pack attached onto one of these pieces here. And then pop it on here. There we are. Little health pack ready to go. Got a couple of weeds growing out each corner there. A couple more warning lights. I'll have some coming out of these loose wires here. Now we've got to display this with some figures. To do this, I usually try and stay as accurate to the game as possible. Sometimes I'll have figures from different eras of Halo, but I don't really mind that. But what I usually like to do is I start with all of the UNSC figures, or at least the main ones. I position them, I kind of imagine what they're doing, and then I'll position the Covenant all around them in attack formation. So this is Halo 3 ODST, so we're gonna start with Alpha 9. We've got Dutch and Mickey, who are the two characters that are actually in this mission, but I thought I'd include most of Alpha 9, or at least the main ODSTs. For anyone who's a serious diorama builder, it is the most fiddly thing in the world. Okay, so we've got Dutch up there, he's activating the bridge, or blowing the bridge. And then we've got Mickey, Romeo up in the sniper tower. We'll have Buck on the ground leading the charge. And the rookie with his anniversary suppressed gold SMG. We do have the new Ghost from the prototype suit review. The other ODSTs we're using today are my favorite in my collection. These four are all from Andy Lager. They're all customs for Bloxfest 2016, all beautifully painted and make a wonderful collection. When you're creating a custom diorama like this, you really have to think about where the Covenant are going to go. I imagine there's gonna be some brute jumps flying here, so we're getting them all ready. All in very tight formation because this is gonna be a very busy diorama. Now it's dumpster diving time, and we're going through pretty much my entire collection of Halo Mega Bloks. Mostly just one of every figure, but then also multiple of figures that I really like. So I've divided them into different figures. We have all of these new Mombasa police, all of these drones, a couple of the new mold grunts, a whole lot more ODSTs, a load of brutes. I also have this, it's a box I got in China and it's usually where I keep all of my favorite figures. Today we need the new Brutes, the ODSTs. You can see these in my latest America haul where I talk about all the figures I purchased while I was in America. I also wish I could include my new Halo 3 Elite but I guess it's part of this civil war by then. There are no Elites in the Covenant or at least they're on the way out. Next we need to give them weapons. These are where I store all of my different Halo Mega Bloks weapons. And usually I'll start by taking all of the colored ones and then after that I'll make do with what else I can find. Covenant weapons. I love the painted plasma rifle. That's one of the nicest. Mega Bloks has always been very generous with colored needlers. You also need to think about what the Covenant use in each game. And the drones usually use similar weapons to the elites. And the UNSC. This is gonna be one of the most fiddly because I'm gonna make sure that every single one of the Troopers has a backpack and I like to make sure they're all the exact same color. I know some collectors like to replace their entire arsenal if there's a new mold. I don't do that, but I certainly use the smaller SMGs versus the bigger ones. Usually Mega Bloks doesn't always give you colored weapons, but it is very easy to just get some silver paint from Warhammer or anything like that and just brush it across really quickly and you always get a nice painted effect. Because I seem to have a lot of painted assault rifles, I think I'm gonna make a main squad. Let's get positioning these weapons. I know that seemed like a lot of work, but honestly, when you're doing a diorama, you're best to lay out everything in front of you so you can figure out exactly what you want and what you need. And also, all of this stuff is not gonna be used, but again, it's good to know what you have. Separate everyone into squads. So first of all, I've got all of these new Mombasa police. They're identical police, but I've made a squad commander, so he'll lead the charge, and I've added some Call of Duty accessories there. All of the badass looking police, basically all the ones that have different um, faces or different armor variants, they've all got the police shields, 
They've all got shotguns. The main squad leader has all of these Call of Duty accessories and a target locator. Remaining New Mombasa police, I just gave these a mix of either SOCOM pistols or suppressed SMGs. We've got these two ODSTs here. I've given him the drone ordinance and a suppressed SMG, and this guy's got one of the cool Decol flamethrowers. Two grunts, we've got one of them as a suicide grunt with the two grenades. Brutes, most of them have got spike grenades, and then some have got an assortment of weapons. I've given the nicest looking gravity hammer to this brute captain. Then we've got all the drones with either needlers or plasma pistols, some hunters, and then some accessories, and some active camo brutes. And that's it, we're gonna start organizing this onto the display. So close your eyes <laughs> and imagine how this diorama will turn out. Imagine exactly what's happening. A lot of people make the mistake with the diorama of just placing the figure and it doesn't have an intentional purpose. This is meant to be a screenshot from an actual battle. So he's reading off the drone. He's kind of staying in cover and he's got his friend covering his back. Again, I'm positioning the UNSC first and imagining what they're doing, how they're engaging with the Covenant. We're gonna have the jump pack brutes coming from either side. Now this guy has a target locator, so a couple of people again need to cover his back. They'll be forming a defensive perimeter with these shields to try and keep the brutes away. But always there's one that breaks through. So, oh no, this guy's like far. But also there's one that broke through. This guy is being attacked right now. He'll obviously react to his friend. And then this one, again, is one of the squad leaders. So he's gonna be looking to try and reinforce his friends around the back. Now we're gonna sort of just roughly display all of these guys with the assault rifles. You can sort of get all of your figures in a running position or like some kind of movement. If you want to display one that has died, make sure to include its weapon. These two are focusing fire. I'm gonna have it on the main chieftain. He's about to lay down. Maybe he's already taken that guy out. Time for the jump pack brutes. Anytime I'm attaching one to a pole, I'll have his legs sort of flying in the air. A little more lifelike. They're attacking down here. The police are really trying their best to shield off the attackers. But this one got through. The more figures you add, the worse it gets on just like the fiddliness of trying to keep everything. If you want to attach something like this, but you don't want it to be obvious, use something like a pipe. This could just be a natural piece coming out of a sewage. Attach it here. This guy here is being crunched by the brute's gravity hammer, but he's just trying to reach out to his friend who is a little too late. Tack is your best friend. Sometimes the posability of these old figures isn't amazing, but if you get a bit of tack on the top of a head, you can just position it so it's looking straight down at the floor. I've added most of the brutes now, and we've got the grunts coming in as well. And because of size constraints, we're only gonna have one hunter, and it should be appropriate that it's the gold one. He's gonna be breaking through. I've actually moved some around here. So you've gotta think about what is drawing each character's attention the most. So now I've, I've changed the rookie. He's charging straight for the hunter with a knife. A couple of them have also changed their face of view, what they're actually paying attention to, but then a lot have got their own problems and will stay focused on their own small battles internally. I've got this guy climbing the ladder and I've given him the radio. So he's sort of warning everybody ahead. I've added a little more now, it's almost complete. We've got all of these police officers in the background. They're looking up at the sky towards the drones. This jump pack brute here, he's throwing a trip mine. At the end of the day, if you've got some space, just get some weapons and just drop them in there, you know? And now we're going to add the drones. You can even just have two of these having a conversation with each other, planning their next attack. So we are taking this flashlight, attaching it to this one who's climbing up the stairs. We're going to get this drone to attach itself to the flashlight there. We attach him here, we can have the drone stealing him away. And same as before, we've got a sniper rifle that's attached into this guy's back and the drone's holding it. It's just a very easy way for them to connect. And he's just gonna be reaching out for his friend. We just can't reach him in time, oh no. Here's a random little piece of pipe. Look at that, woo. And I think that's done. I've done a whole lot of tweaks. This is the one of a kind Halo 3 ODST Oni Sight reimagining. And yeah, it's just fantastic. Let me know if you would like to see more of these customs in the future. I'm thinking of actually extending this to the full bridge, which would be pretty epic. I've definitely got the materials to do it. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're all staying safe during COVID-19. Very scary times, but I hope at least kind of keep you company while you're all in lockdown with all these Halo videos. And the Halo Brute is signing off. Shh. Now that was all child's play. This is truly the terrifying moment. Whoa, whoa.
home safe and sound. Hello once again YouTube and welcome to part 2 of my Halo 3 ODST diorama. Now I just got such an overwhelmingly positive response from the first part, I thought I'd extend the tower to a full bridge, let's check it out. So the first part is the planning phase and we need to design this. So we're going to do some research by playing the mission and find out exactly what makes this bridge tick. So the beautiful thing about Fiat's mode is we can just pause and play whatever we need. Essentially, this is the start of the bridge, and we're gonna have the tower, the gateway there, and then extend the bridge out. So I've got a lot of base plates in the attic. I, I took a couple of down. So I've got a lot of base plates in the attic. I took a couple of down, right? I took a couple of down. All right, we got some bad news. I just went in the attic to find the warthog and the scorpion for the video, and I dropped the warthog out of the attic. So I'm gonna try and rebuild this, but hey, they are meant to be destroyed in the diorama, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> oh. oh no. Then the bridge is going to extend all the way across here. I also found two hunters now, thanks to one of the comments on one of my videos saying I should have two. The next step is to make sure that this piece is directly in the middle of this base plate. Then we're just going to secure them in with these temporary pegs. The scorpion is way too fat for this bridge, so we're going to extend it out by quite a way. And I don't even know if the camera can tell that they're two different colors a dark green and a dark gray. And these are gonna be the main supports for our bridge. So we go dark green, gray, dark green, gray. And then we're gonna repeat this pattern on both sides. Bingo bango. It's actually like a hugely satisfying color palette. Now we got something to work with. Elephants are always the best custom build material because they have these tasty green bricks. It looks like these are quite thin lines here, so I'm gonna replace all of this with only one strip long blocks. I've moved these pieces to work in accordance with this design here. These represent the archway that's gonna go here, and the rest of it has to be filled with these guys. So we'll start with the long ones, and then we'll just orientate between long and short. Done. Now, same as before, we're gonna add these thinner ones to the top of the support. You need to make sure that they overlap so it holds together more tightly. So I'm gonna start this build with just a simple two piece on either side. And then when I put my first one on, it'll overlap and lock everything together tightly. And then same as before, we're going to go small, long, small, long. There's a few options here, because like technically a lot of this support structure is not green but I just love that UNSC green color that I've decided to make it that way. But I could have like a different colored archway. Now what I'm doing right now is really simple. I've attached all of these really loosely in a line. And this is the exact length of my archway. So I'm just gonna use this as a reference while I'm looking at what pieces I can use. So we've decided on desert print for the top of the bridge. Here's our windows, like our transparent glass. And we're gonna clip these in one by one. We've got all of these pieces here. 
That's gonna clip in nicely there. And that will mimic the top of that. These pieces here will all run underneath this one. A jump forward in progress now. We've got these little searchlights at the front, but we drop in level using these pieces and then this curves it off really nicely. These also round off the sides and then we're starting to build a base structure now. It's coming together really well. It's gonna look very nice up there. The gateway needs more support like this. <laughs> Every one of these, put a three piece on and attach them around the outside and fasten it all together there. So it's a lot more secure and a little more streamlined in the process. Then filling this all in, pop these in here. Now we're making the final transition from desert to green. And we're gonna layer this non-stop. Okay. Now we've removed these outside pieces here. Get two long ones, slot them in. Some of these short ones, either side. Here is the bridge to br arch, the archway for the bridge. This will slot into place just like this. A couple of other additions I made to the bridge. I streamlined everything, little antenna here, underneath all of these really nice pieces that just attach so well. Firmly attaching all these pieces together. We've still got a lot to do. We've got to work on all of this. We've got to make the charges and some support beams, and then we've got to run the structure around here. Just currently putting together these four pieces. These are going to be the charges, or at least the towers that the charges are set on. And then these four to go alongside it. This one has to be one strip longer. Slot it in. As the bedroom slowly descends into chaos, I've collected the next few pieces we need. We've got these grated pieces and a cap on the top. Let's set the charges. Traffic light strips. There's no better way to visualize these kind of slanting pieces than these ones that literally go right down. Hello everyone and welcome to day two. Now I got really busy last night organizing everything, finding all the pieces I needed. So I'm gonna talk you through all of the additional details I've made right now. First of all, I've added a new block of silver that perfectly aligns with this bronze. I've got these little exhaust vents and I'm just putting some dark green underneath so you can barely notice it, like they're coming out of the tower. I'm going to start with these silver ones. I've got four of these. I'm gonna put each of these next to the main suspension supports. These are the main design focus, so I'm gonna work out from here. I've got four of these ones. Put them either sides. I'm going to use this piece, the longer pieces, every two block interval. I've got some sewage grates running towards the middle. Ah, look at that, that's really starting to take shape. Cap off the top of my towers. Now we're gonna make the charges so the ODSTs can blow the bridge. We've got two pieces today, the turbine, and this little piece from an alien set. I'm going to get some tack, pop it inside the turbine. Usually I'd be a little more careful with tack showing on the piece, but it is a charge, so I would imagine it involves some putty. I don't mind. And we're going to stick this onto the side of the bridge. Ready to blow. They actually, they look pretty cool. Happy with that. This is not an efficient way of doing this. I would not recommend it, but this is how I'm finding new pieces. The Mega Bloks Ferry keeps on giving. Now we've got a smooth section that literally runs the entire way across. Really nice design. We'll start by filling in these ones and use the smaller pieces, fill in those gaps. Now I'm just trying to smooth out everything. I'm trying to make sure that there's no bobbly, dippy pieces. It all sort of flows really nicely. And I'm gonna get these pieces here. Just fill in as many of the holes as possible. And it just fits in perfectly. Flash forward like a billion hours. The whole thing is streamlined now. Everything is smoothed out. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty wonderful now. Let's actually see how good it looks. I've made sure that the Scorpion can fit coming out of the gate like this. We'll add a few flames to them too. That is the majority of the bridge. I'm gonna do some more alterations and then I'm going to build up this side and then we'll see what it looks like.
day three and we are done. This is the one of a kind Halo 3 ODST Oni Alpha Sight bridge build. I am so, so happy with how it turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it and I'll see you tomorrow for when we display this with figures. It's gonna be pretty wild. The streets of New Mombasa lay dormant and quiet, while Alpha 9 prepared for an imminent attack from the Covenant, and while their chances were slim, they would defend only Alpha Sight till their dying breath. Or I guess till they just blow it up. This is the Halo 3 ODST diorama. ODSTs have some backup. We're gonna use a lot of the figures from the last build, but I've also found a lot more to use. We're gonna have the brand new drop pod jackals and some brute honor guards, night patrol brutes, a lot more jump pack brutes, new mold brutes, a half AC jackal, and the legendary full AC jackal. Always get the colored weapons above anything else. Really happy with this. Let's get it on the display. To UNSC and Covenant, because that's the two directions they're coming from. We are ready to go now. We got some extra reinforcements. This squad of blue marines. <laughs> blue? <laughs> this squad of marines is led by Sergeant Avery Johnson. And I've given him the Halo 5 shotgun, because why not? David Stockbridge Custom, this jump pack ODST. And then also the most treasured figure to me, Avery. He used to be the mascot of the channel, and now he's the mascot of the Discord. And yeah, he's gonna be leading the charge. We're gonna start with the drop pod. Landed for reinforcements. And out of that drop pod, Sniper support, Mickey and Dutch. They're blowing the bridge, so they're going to take center field right where the action is. And we're gonna have the rest of Alpha 9 covering his back. So we got Romeo in the sniper tower, Buck on the bridge, and then we'll have the rookie just right in the thick of it. We're gonna have more ODSTs coming to cover Buck, and then this stealth ODST. These two, same as before, will just be in their own little team. Ghost, he'll be working on his own too. You know what, maybe Ghost and the Rookie will be side by side. I'm definitely gonna have some Covenant that have already broken through. And then I'll have these four custom and Lega ODSTs sort of defending their position here, which this ODST can conveniently have dropped in to help them. Johnson must be leading a squad of Marines out of the building. So I'll put him by the main gate. We'll put one of the Marines on this turret and all of his Marines backing him up. We'll have all the riot shield boys. They're all defending the position of Mickey and Dutch. If they're defending it, one of them got knocked out. Jump pack ODST straight in the thick of it. And Avery coming up to support his brothers too. I think I'll wait a little bit to display all the rest of the police officers, see where I'm at with the Covenant. All right, let's get some Covenant bad boys in here. Flying over the top. <laughs> Flying a little too far. And number three, shot in midair by the ODST. Leading the charge, we got a double pair of gold hunters and they're charging straight for the rookie. This brute honor guard surveying what's going on. And then this brute captain is gonna be coming straight over the warthog. Now I just can't go another video without using my favorite 10th anniversary elite. Now it's part of the elite covenant war right now. So he's just gonna be dead. He's just gonna be on the, but I have to have him there. He's gonna be leaning against that scorpion. These brute night watchers will have snuck through the back and they're about to assault the Marines. These two white brutes, two grunts, balancing on the edge of a bridge there, very daring. Then we're gonna have this fella on top of the support structure again with just a bit of attack. Jackal sniper at the back, looking to ruin someone's day on legendary. So we'll put a load of them in this watchtower, have a couple of them aiming down at the street. And then we'll have this gray marine in the center of the watchtower and he's radioing for backup. Wow, that was fiddly, but we got them all in. Now we're just gonna dot NMPD troopers wherever there's space. Now this looks really good. We can just display loads around that drop pod over there.
These guys are all running down from the second floor, and you can always have one climbing the ladder. And then the last part is the drones. They have one hanging off there. The ODSTs can be fighting the two red drone squad leaders right up close and personal. And would you lucky here, that is almost done. It wouldn't be quite the same diorama if there wasn't a poor soldier being whisked away by a drone. Supply crate, traffic cones, some more fusion coils, a couple more trip mines, and then some weapons. Just sprinkle them in. Well, there you go, everybody. This is the Halo 3 ODST only Alpha Sight bridge diorama build. It just looks so epic. Thank you so much for all the support with the first part, the second part, and I'm sure the support you'll be given for this part. And then it's up to you to choose what video comes next. And I'll see you next time. Avery, my Lord and Savior, is signing off.